Welcome to Showtime 49. Welcome to Showtime 49. What's good, y'all? We just took our first L of the season against the Cleveland Browns. What a weird, weird game that was. But as you can see from the ticker below, you know, it wasn't all on Brock. Had a lot going on. But today was definitely Brock's worst game of his NFL career. To me, what I saw out there normally Brock has a great game, and there's a couple throws he misses. Today seemed like a complete 180. He had a bad game, but he did throw a couple dimes, but those dimes were dropped. For instance, that 60-yard pass to Brandon Ayuk that could have been a touchdown, and he dropped. You know, Ayuk dropped a few passes today, but Brock Purdy also wasn't accurate. It just seemed a little off, a little late reading coverages, a little late delivering the ball. He seemed like he regressed from stepping up in the pocket and making passes, and he started bailing out the backside, which clearly didn't work. Um, I still can't be too hard on Brock because he's literally been dang near perfect. And he's human, and everyone has bad games. Every quarterback, every team, every position. I mean, offense today did not show up Kyle Shanahan himself you know I'm, I'm gonna get to him a little bit later I'm gonna get back to Brock Brock all I can say is these are the games that we really need from you we need to see you in these games now this one didn't turn out the way we wanted it but it was still good you need to have this kind of game under your belt the 49ers needed this game because to me, they seemed like they were getting a little big headed. You know, it all started with the George Kittle shirt, which I don't have a problem with. But um, if you watched after the game when they asked, they were talking to Brock Purdy, Fred Warner, and George Kittle. And Kittle was like, yeah, we're moving on to Cleveland. Like it was just a, the easy win, like a lot of people thought. But when you're coming off a game as, a, as a emotional as Dallas, and we destroyed them the way that we did, it's usually kind of like a trap game in a way. Like, you don't really want to come off the next game against another team like the Cleveland Browns, who you just expect to win against because their offense hasn't really been producing too much of anything with Deshaun Watson or not. Now, they had a third-string quarterback out there. I mean, everything kind of lined up to, yeah, we should probably whoop them. But it seems like they didn't take account for that number one defense that those Cleveland Browns have. I mean, my goodness. That defense was all over us. They owned our offensive line. Owned them. And then it didn't help at all. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Brock Purdy had that on his mind the entire game because it didn't help that he was behind and late or too far or just missing open passes and you know, what I've been hearing so far is late game, Brock got us down there. I disagree with that. I don't think Brock got us down there. He threw like a five-yard pass to Brandon Ayuk, and then he, he got us a little bit further down there. And then earlier in the game, if it hadn't been for that pick by D'Amador Lenore, who's to say what would have happened? Because that's what led to the last touchdown that, that put us back up ahead. And I know a lot of people want to blame Jake Moody. I mean, shoot, I blame him for something because he missed two field goals today. I know that first one was deep, but this game winning one, he should have he should have freaking made the field goal. He should have made it. It's it's a sad feeling today, but I'm not too mad because at the end of the day, we're five and one. You know, you tell me how many teams went undefeated. So it's cool. We lost the game. I expect everyone to lose again. I mean, the Eagles, they're next, right? They, I mean, they went pretty far last year without losing the game, but then it happened. So, you know, 
tough games happen, bad games happen. I don't want us getting too out of hand, but it's like overreacting so much. You can't call Purdy a bus right now and all those things, but I know personally I wanted to see, not at the expense of CMC and Debo, but I wanted to see what Purdy could be if he were given a team where he has to succeed, where it's on his back. You know, is it really CMC? Is it really Debo and him? Is it really the gadgets or is Brock Purdy really this good? Now, it's still hard to say after just one game like that, we had that first opportunity because there was weather involved as well. But I distinctly remember a time where Trey Lance was still on this team and he had a not so great game because of weather. And the narrative was totally different. Now, I'm not here to talk about him, but I'm just saying weather was finally a part of it. And being that Brock Purdy was at Iowa State, I mean, you would have think he's played in games before where weather was an issue. But who knows, you know? Today was just not his day. And that's okay. That's okay. Niner Nation, we're good. I still feel confident against anybody. And I always say injuries. Injuries would be the thing that would take us down. Debo, his doesn't look serious, but Trent went down earlier in the game, but he came back fairly quick. But CMC being out with the oblique injury, we don't know. But we know how important CMC is to this team, and we saw it. Now, Jordan Mason was okay. You know, he had a touchdown at the end, which is great. You know, I, I love Jordan Mason. I mean, I, I've always said that. You guys know, I love Jordan Mason. He's not CMC. And to me, I think he should be up before Elijah Mitchell because as good as we know Elijah Mitchell is, he's just not available enough. He's always injured. But even with all that, it still wasn't enough because that Cleveland Browns defense came to play. They were confident the entire game. Us starting a fight at the beginning of the game, it just feels like we got a little big-headed. Like we needed, we needed to be humble. It just sucks that it had to actually happen. And we still had a chance to win the game. Insert Jake Moody. But Brock was off today. He was. And it it is what it is. Brock had a bad game today. His worst of his career. But that's all I'm going to say on Brock. I'm going to move on to this play calling just for a little bit. Now, the play calling, Kyle Shanahan, I feel like you could have really helped Brock Purdy a little bit more. You could have helped him, like, move the offensive line a little bit, maybe get some quick plays in there, some quick slant, something. I mean, a couple more screen plays, something to get him going. But, jeez, it was like we couldn't do anything. It reminded me of a Jimmy G offense, and it felt like Kyle regressed a little bit. It was just bad on dang near all phases. It just didn't look good. Now, the defense kept us in the game for – most of the game, they only gave up 19 points, but they still got gassed for over 300 plus yards. And uh, I feel like they needed it. They got hit in the mouth today. They did. You know, even Mike Tyson got knocked out. Today, we went up against Evander Holyfield, I guess. But man, I'm going to need Kyle Shanahan to. Go away from the game plan a little bit. If things aren't going your way, it's okay, my guy. Switch it up. Show us why you're trying to be coach of the year. Show us why you're the genius Kyle Shanahan. Show us. Games like this, you knew it was going to be tough, but it was like you wanted it to be tough or something. I felt like we could have still had easier plays. We had multiple opportunities to get a stranglehold on this game. It just didn't happen, which is why we got outplayed. We definitely got outplayed today. And to be honest, like they their rushing game at one point, they had more yards than our total offense. It was like they niner the Niners. You know, it was, I, I was starting to not understand what getting a regular season loss felt like. I'm like, I'm just starting to feel like we should win every game. But maybe they did too. And maybe that was the problem. Maybe that was the problem. There were so many things that went on during this game. And, of course, I'm going to touch on these refs now. 
because they called way too many penalties, way too many penalties. That last drive where they scored, where we had to, where they called that defenseless receiver on Gibson, that was BS, man. Total BS. That man did not hit him in the head. He hit him with the shoulder pads in the chest. It was just a good football hit. And that was going to make it fourth and 10. Do you think the game would have turned out different? Maybe. Probably. Maybe I'm sitting here smoking a game winning cigar. But instead, I got to sit in sorrow. <laughs> Not really sorrow because it's okay. We're five and one. And we lost to an AFC team. So if it had to happen, it better it happened against the Browns than happening against Philadelphia, than happening against Seattle or Arizona or the Rams or anything like that. Yes, it affects us trying to reach the number one seed, but it's still early in the season. We ain't even halfway through. So I just think for everybody out there, we just need to calm down. It's okay. We all have bad games. We just need to see if Brock can bounce back now. If Jake Moody can bounce back now. These are the type of things that are the makeup of what makes a great quarterback, a great kicker, a great coach, all of it. You have to be able to bounce back from adversity. And this is big time adversity. You got your first loss. Cool. Let's get it out the way. You got your first pick today for the season. Cool. Get it out the way. Let's turn around next week and let's show everybody what we really are. We just won't get the opportunity against a great defense like that for a while. But that's what we really wanted to see, what we needed to know. But it's all right, Niner fans. We going to be just fine. Not worried. I'm going to holler at y'all in the next one.